in peace. So goes one of the coolest one-liners I ever heard, and it's part of one of the most unheralded Christmas action movies of all time. Now, Christmas action has always been a thing. There's something about the juxtaposition of holidays and ultra-violent action that's always been irresistible to Hollywood. In movies like First Blood and To Live and Die in LA, the holiday setting makes the desperately violent scenario that we're in the middle of all the more grim, while other classics like Lethal Weapon and Die Hard ultimately have Christmas messages about friendship and family that come through just as strongly as in a straight-up holiday classic like It's a Wonderful Life. Come out to the coast, we get together, have a few laughs. Yet, not every Christmas action movie becomes a classic, which brings me to this special Christmas edition of The Best Movie You Never Saw, where we tackle the Dolph Lundgren action flick, I Come in Peace, which is also known by the title it's currently streaming as, Dark Angel. Merry fucking Christmas. I think we're dealing with aliens and not from Mexico. The two of them. One's the killer and I think the other one's on our side. Dolph Lundgren's career was at a strange place in 1990. Mainstream action hero Starden eluded him somewhat with Masters of the Universe being a flop. But he ended up signing on for a slew of movies that weren't quite the DTV level work he'd become known for in the late part of the 90s but weren't quite big studio movies either. Here is justice. Here is punishment. Here in me. They were B-movies that were shot independently with the idea that they would get picked up by a studio and get a mainstream release. That way, they had decent budgets and were intended to play in theaters. Those movies include Red Scorpion, <laughs> The Punisher, Take that message to your people. Showdown a little Tokyo. I'm your new partner. Oh, really? Well, looks like they all got away. Good job, officer. And Dark Angel. You sure you want to go with that particular look? I think you should give it some thought because external things are very important. This is one of the first produced screenplays for writer David Kep, who did a rewrite on the film and would later become an A-list screenwriter after Jurassic Park and a slew of hits including Mission Impossible, War of the Worlds, Spider-Man, and many more. It was directed by action specialist Craig R. Baxley, who helmed two other best movies you never saw classics, Action Jackson and Stone Cold. Dark Angel was produced independently, but on a high enough level that the idea was that it would sell to a major studio, something which unfortunately didn't happen. So pissed off I could throw you through a goddamn window. And the film only received a middling theatrical release as I Come in Peace in the US. Yet it was a worldwide hit on home video particularly in the UK where it kept its original title, Dark Angel. Dolph Lundgren plays a down-and-out cop named Jack Kane, who works in Houston and is on the trail of a drug lord named Victor Manning, who runs a crew of yuppie drug dealers called the White Boys. What's with all the extra muscle? Evening, Mr. Manning. Just think of them as curries. In the film's opening moments, the White Boys not only steal a massive load of cocaine from a police station, but they blow it up for good measure while also making the mistake of killing Kane's partner, Ray. Smile, Ray. Thanks mainly to the fact that Jack, who's presented as kind of an incompetent cop, got distracted by a liquor store holdup that gave him the chance to unleash a couple roundhouse kicks. You're not Buzz. No, you're not very smart. But left his partner to be discovered by the bad guys and executed. <laughs> Yet the white boys aren't Jack's only problem. There's also a hulking alien named Talek, played by a friend of Joe Blow's, Matthias Hughes, who is using heroin to trigger the release of endorphins in his human victim so that he can suck out and sell all their endorphins as a drug on his homeworld. Now, how is that for high concept? An alien cop out to stop Talek is quickly neutralized. He must be stopped. But he passes on his alien tech to Jack who now has to deal with both the white boys and this alien. But in true buddy cop fashion, he's got a new partner. Let me ask you something. Why don't you like me? I honestly don't give a shit, but I'm curious. Is it because I'm more successful? Uh, is that it? A geeky FBI agent named Smith, who's played by Brian Benben, -Ben, a face well known to 90s aficionados for two reasons. One, he was the lead on the sexy HBO series Dream On. Just a twisted male thing. 
That's right. Which a lot of us watched, thanks to all the skin it featured. And the other is that the lucky guy ended up marrying dream girl Madeline Stone. We put it right here. And you know what? They're still married to this day. What a lucky guy. Lundgren also has a love interest in the movie, a coroner played by Betty Brantley. And Lundgren, believe it or not, is kind of charming in the romantic scenes, thanks largely to Brantley being a rather high-class love interest. I like abuse as much as the next girl. But this time when you had me wondering whether you were dead or alive, I was kind of rooting for death. In fact, her and the pretty skilled Ben Ben helped elevate Lundgren's acting game considerably. Making him seem much more comfortable on camera than he did in his other movies of the era. There's a limit to revenge. Well, I guess I haven't reached one yet. And this actually carried over to his next film, Showdown Little Tokyo. One imagines Ben Ben coaching him a bit on how to be more laid back and naturalistic, and it worked well because Lundgren's acting was noticeably better in this movie and all the films that followed it. Never trust nobody. Kane Manual, page one, chapter one. Around the time this was made, stories first had started to come out about Dolph's interesting background. A native of Sweden, before he ever became a model and then action star, Lundgren was an academic with a degree in chemical engineering and a Fulbright scholarship to MIT. In the movie, Ben Ben's FBI agent initially treats him like a meathead until Dolph brings him back to his loft apartment, which is full of modern art, a wine rack, and a pool table, showing the multitudes of his character. Interesting painting. You like it? Yeah, well, you know, it's really, uh... Big. Right. Usually rebel cops lived in shithole apartments, or like Riggs and Lethal Weapon, a dumpy trailer. Lundgren's place is sleek and sophisticated, just like the actor himself. Yeah, sure, he rocks a Henley and pumps iron, but he also likes to relax and unwind with a nice Merlot. Yet, he's also enough of a lunghead that when he realizes he's dealing with an alien bad guy, he's actually kind of pissed off to discover that his new partner and captain don't believe his claims of a drug-dealing alien. What are you gonna do? Tell him we're, we're fighting drug dealers from outer space, huh? This is hallmark of director Braxley's work. His tough guy heroes are often unconventionally sophisticated or unconventional, period. In Action Jackson, the title character has a law degree and rocks a tux, plus, of course, his Henley. While in Stone Cold, Brian Bosworth's copper lives on the beach with a pet iguana. You're gonna have to eat your grub if you wanna be a stud. The use of an army of white yuppie drug dealers is a nice touch too with them. The kind of bad guys you don't really mind getting mowed down, especially when their boss is Mr. Gorpley from Perfect Strangers. Nothing personal, okay? Just business. <laughs> Matthias Hughes is also a very cool-looking villain with his platinum blonde mullet I come in peace. and being 6'5 and a pretty interesting physical match for Lundgren, who, in a move that a lot of tough modern action stars like Vin Diesel, The Rock, and Jason Statham should take to heart, doesn't mind taking his licks on screen and being a bit of an underdog. He's a tall, tall guy, but next to Matthias Hughes, he looks really small. All things considered, this is a fun little action movie with good Houston, Texas locations and a very evocative of its era score by Jan Hammer of Miami Vice fame. Granted, it's more than a little dumb. Welcome to our village, they say, and then they kill you. And there probably could have been a little more action worked in, with the white boys initially set up as a much bigger threat than they end up being. I always want a huge body count in movies like these. And it's like turning your radio dial to K-I-L-L. -L. Well, I think the budget maybe was a little too low to give me that. Even still, Dark Angel, aka I Come in Peace, is a really fun little B movie to put on at Christmas time if you've seen all the action classics of the holidays. So give it a watch. I don't think you'll regret it. I come in peace. And you go in pieces, asshole. <laughs>